And go! Okay, good. All right, we are live. Let's give a little bit of applause so that the people know you're here. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody who's shown up online. I'm just going to refresh my page so that I can see it. If you've got any questions, my goal is to be able to see them. But, uh, yeah. We'll see how all this goes. Um, so hopefully you know where you are. You are at Songwriting with Imposter Syndrome. So this is for persons who write songs but don't consider themselves songwriters. Naughty, naughty. Um, if you're doing the thing, you are a songwriter. Congratulations. Um, so let's start with hang-ups. So let's start by listing some of the things that hold us back from songwriting or that come up when we're songwriting. Um, or come up when we go to share our songs with other people that uh, make us go, oh, I'm not good at this or I can't do this. So start with some of your hang-ups. Give us a couple minutes on that. people listening at home, you should do these exercises too. There's going to be a few of them. So just grab a sheet of paper, pen, that's all you need. You can do this on your computer. You're already on your computer. Few more seconds. Okie dokie, what have we got? Hang ups that are holding us back from songwriting. Throw them at me. Self consciousness. Self consciousness. Very good. Perfectionism. Perfectionism. You've got no hang-ups. How old are you? Nine. Nine. You're nine years old. You don't have hang-ups yet. <laughs> You're going to be learning more what not to do <laughs> later. Yeah, good. I like how when uh, Gracie introduced herself, she goes, I'm a great songwriter. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> solid. <laughs> yeah. That's all we hear you do is sing, sing, sing. That's awesome. Can That's I another one out? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, throw another one out. In fact, for me, uh, I spent my whole life engineering. Mm -hmm. And to do some of this is totally unknown. How, how to do this is totally, totally what? alien. Alien. It just alien. feels alien. Got it. Feels alien. All right. Oh, you said you're one? Yeah. Good. Cool. We're on the same page. But raise your hand if someone else already said you're one. Hey, good. Okay, so look around the room. These are common experiences, right? Anybody got anything else we want to throw out there before we roll on? Yeah. Yeah? When I'm starting off, I sort of got a bit of a blockage. Blocked. Mental uh, block. Yeah. Okay. Just starting off. Yeah. <coughs> Great. Okay. So, self-consciousness, perfectionism, feels alien, mental blocks. Um, good news. This is all stuff that I was like, we're going to cover this in this workshop. So, woohoo! Making me feel effective already. All right, so I'm going to read you some lyrics from some songs, right? And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about those songs. Revving up your engine, listen to her howl and roar. Metal under tension, begging you to touch and go. 
headed into twilight, spreading out her wings tonight. She's got you jumping off the deck and shoving into overdrive. You'll never say hello to you until you get it on the red line overload. You'll never know what you can do until you get it up as high as you can go. Out along the edges, always where I burn to be. The further on the edge, the hotter the intensity. Highway to the danger zone. Gonna take it right into the danger zone. Right, okay. Now, show of hands, who thought those were brilliant lyrics? Yeah. What, brilliant? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. Who knows the song? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very famous song. Out of context, not the most poetically observant or thoughtful or mindful or advanced thing. Right? Um, not something you'd read in a poetry book, necessarily, right? Okay, I'm gonna read you another set of lyrics. If you want my lovin', if you really do, don't be afraid, baby, just ask me. You know I'm gonna give it to you. Oh, and I do declare I wanna see you with it. Stretch out your arms, little boy, you're gonna get it. Cause I love you, baby, I love you. Ain't no doubt about it, baby, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Baby, I love you. We've got some giggles. <laughs> Very good. Um, does anybody know that song? It's not a Spice Girls song. No? It is a fairly old one. Yeah. All right, I'm going to read you one more, and then I'll tell you about them. Okay. Um, heart beats fast colors and promises, how to be brave, how can I love when I'm afraid to fall, but watching you stand alone, all of my doubt suddenly goes away somehow, one step closer, I've died every day waiting for you, darling don't be afraid, I have loved you for a thousand years, I'll love you for a thousand more, alright, okay. raise your hand if you know that one, okay, so, a lot of us know it, not everybody. Let me tell you about these songs. All right, so revving up your engine, li uh, listen to her howl and roar. This first one is, of course, Highway to the Danger Zone, which was uh, performed by Kenny Loggins. And uh, this song was one of the hit singles from the soundtrack to Top Gun, and it was the best-selling soundtrack of all time and one of the best-selling singles of all time. All right? I want you to listen to those words again. Revving up your engine, listen to her howl and roar, metal under tension, begging you to touch and go, highway to the danger zone, ride into the danger zone. They never say hello to you until you get it on the red line overload. You'll never know what you can do until you get it up as high as you can go. What does that mean? <laughs> Does it rice? Yeah, no, it doesn't mean but those lyrics on their own not very inspiring. Right? Here's what makes it inspiring. Alright, so just a wee bit of context, right? Mm -hmm. these lyrics that were like, okay, 
<laughs> yeah. What did that con What did that context do? The song a lot. All right. So you see different lyrical styles, different context. Um, the the quote from Hans Christian Andersen comes back to me: "Where words fail, music speaks." All right. Mm -hmm. So the 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 there's no one part of the music that is more important than all of the others, yeah. right? If the lyrics were that much more important than the rest of the music, then it would have just been a poem, right? So it's about, um, you, your lyrics don't have to be poem worthy, right? Your music itself doesn't have to be so amazing that um, it could stand alone. Right, it's the, the culmination of all the parts that you're pulling together, and only you can determine what feels worthwhile to you. Um, as many different genres, as many songwriters as there are, there are different opinions on those songs and those genres and all these things. It's not your job to worry about other people's opinions. It is your job to just create something that feels right to you, and what feels right to you is not objective. So I'm not here to say, unfortunately, I can't tell you, this is a good song, this is a bad song. All looking strictly at lyrics, and there's lots of song competitions, by the way, that look at just lyrics for a song and stuff like that. They're missing a whole context, you know, like those are, this is just to say, do not judge yourself by any metric except your own, right? Now, right, those are the book came up with. Where did we get up to? Okay, um, why songs? We talked about um, comfort, feel good vibes, to be happy when sad, connecting with yourself, expressing emotions, telling a story, getting into a flow state, um, feeling not alone, connecting with others. And generally we decided these are all self-regulation things, right? Uh, emotional regulation. Um, times when we use music to self-regulate, emotional ex uh, regulation. So exercising, yeah? What are some other times when we use music specifically? I know earlier we said to become happy when we're sad. So if we're feeling emotion that we don't want to feel, right? So exercising is more like to get us into the mood to do something, right? Um, yeah, so to, we, so, so to get us into a mood and to get us out of a mood, <laughs> out of a mood. Um, and sometimes we just want to, so we said connecting with ourselves and connecting with others, sometimes we just want to sit with whatever it is that we're feeling and know that we're not alone, right? So if a song that you are writing accomplishes any of these things, congratulations, it is a song, yeah? So th it's as it's as easy as that, right? Um, we kind of got into this a little bit earlier, but don't yuck someone else's yum. Don't yuck your own yum, <laughs> right? If it works for you, if you're getting something out of it, embrace that. That is fine. There's a lot of gatekeeping in all kinds of things in creative communities and things like that we don't want to gatekeep self-regulation and that's what people use music for functionally right that's what you're using music for when you're writing it generally speaking and then when you put it out into the world you're giving someone else an opportunity to use your music to self-regulate yeah it's a beautiful thing it's a very functional, human, lovely thing. All right, so let's talk about types of lyrics. There's narrative lyrics, which tell a story. Usually we see characters in a setting and some event or events unfold, all right? There's lyrical, which focuses on the conveying of an emotion, right? The narrative is secondary to the emotion that is conveyed. It might not even be a clear picture. It might just be words that have, that just give certain connotations, all right? And then there's instrumental, where the voice is functioning more as an instrument. If there are words, they're more like scat or nonsense syllables, or the, the way that you'd know if it's more instrumental is if the words could be replaced with any other words, 
and the essence of the song would be unaffected. All right. All of these are completely legit. Yeah. Um, I've got a song. Well, before I do that, let's just talk about the three examples that we've used. Um, uh, Danger Zone. What kind of song is it? Narrative, lyrical, instrumental. more lyrical right but it's more lyrical revving up your engine listen to her howl and roar metal under tension begging you to touch and go there's no story there's no beginning middle end these are just words that conjure up certain feelings and it's a combination of words that together rev up your engine <laughs> that's the idea and what do you think the prompt was for writing this song Because this was a song that was written for Top Gun. Yeah, the prompt was need for speed, yeah. make them feel stuff. <laughs> yeah, and it does it. And exactly what you said, you know, like you were like, I like the song because it does this. <laughs> you, know? And that's, you know, sometimes all you need to know about a song is that it makes you feel like this. <laughs> and that's cool. Um, good. Um, uh, baby, I love you. If you want my lovin', if you really do, don't be afraid, just ask me. You know I'm gonna give it to you. Ooh, and I do declare I wanna see you with it. Stretch out your arms, baby boy, you're gonna get it. Yeah. Lyrical, narrative. Not really, it doesn't have a story. It's just a stream of consciousness, like these are my feelings, <laughs> these are my thoughts right but it's not a story right yeah yeah um a thousand years heart beats fast colors and promises how to be brave how can i love when i'm afraid to fall but watching you stand alone all of my doubt suddenly goes away somehow one step closer I have died every day. Time stands still. That one's kind of both. It's got a little bit more of a, you, a setting. You can picture things. Yeah. So that one's a little bit more narrative esque, you know, but also the chorus I have died every day waiting for you. That doesn't further the narrative. That's just the feeling, right? Um, so songs are also not strictly one or the other. So everything I tell you, you can find examples that don't do that, <laughs> right? Every single rule in songwriting is really just things that are done often, and you can find millions of examples that are not that, you know? Um, I'll give you things that'll kind of uh, give you... Um, a bit more parameters for writing music soon. Right now, it's mostly just opening you up and being like, there's no, because a lot of times where people get stuck is they feel like everything they do is wrong. And so there is no wrong. That's what we're going to start with. There's no wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. My songwriting style, your songwriting style. Okay. What is your songwriting style? No two people are going to have the same songwriting style. Right? Your songwriting style is a combination of your influences, your likes, your dislikes, your intentions, all the things that make you you, and you are the only one of those. Right? Don't try to write like someone else. Feel free to be inspired by someone else. Um, a good prompt is to write a song in the style of someone else. Just know that you're not going to write a song in the style of someone else. You're going to write a song in the style of you because you can't really 100% write a song in the style of someone else. Um, I love prompts like, because once you open the door and you're like, oh, I can do anything, then you're like, ah, oh, frick, I can do anything. That's too much. It's like looking at a blank canvas and not knowing where to start. Um, start anywhere just decide where to start. So give yourself limitations in order to have some place to start. So feel free to write a song in the style of Rihanna or write a song in the style of whomever. 
when you look at it, you're going to see what things in that song that you wrote in the style of Rihanna are Rihanna, and you'll start to see which things are you. Because you can't not be you, and there's going to be something in there that's not Rihanna. <laughs> right? And if you do this, again, this is just a, a doing thing. If you do this with a lot of different things, it kind of frees up your mind. You don't have to figure out who you are immediately. You're not going to know who you are as a songwriter immediately, right? Just allow yourself to do a bunch of things. And then uh, with these prompts in the style of these different people, or I'll give you some other prompts later. And when you look at them, go, okay, what was in the style of that artist as was the prompt and which things were me that just kind of crept out that I couldn't not do, right? And you start to get a clear idea of who you are as a songwriter and that's where you want to lean in. Hmm? Um, so here's our next exercise. Next thing I want you to write down. When you listen to music, what are you hearing? <laughs> this can be in general and if you're finding in general difficult then feel free to pick a song or an artist that you can kind of hear in your mind and jot down what draws you to that song or artist All right, feel free to th start throwing out what it is that you got. The beat, you listen to the beat first. All right. Melody. Melody. Okay. Catchy lyrics. Quite often, when I think about, oh, I've listened to that song, it's, um, I repeat. Yes. Words. I like that. Right. So we've got someone who listens to the beat first, someone who listens to the melody, someone who listens to the catchy lyrics. Anyone got anything else? The feel. The feel? Yeah, the feel. All right. Good. I raise your hand if someone else already said the thing that you think of first. Cool. Awesome. Great. All right. So how do you start a song? Start with what's important to you. Start with what draws you to a song. So if you're the person who's like, the beat matters to me, start with the beat. If the melody matters to you, start with the melody. If finding those catchy lyrics is the thing that sticks out to you, start with that and build it out from there. The next thing that I want us to highlight is that your limitations can be your strengths. A lot of, something that holds a lot of people back from songwriting is they're like, oh, I'll do it when I get better at playing guitar or better at singing or better at playing piano. Those are goalposts that you can always move. <laughs> um, instead, I want to invite us to embrace our limitations, okay? So here's an ex the next exercise I'd like us to do. Um, write down your perceived strengths and limitations on, a, uh, on your sheet of paper. So write down your strengths as you perceive them and write down your weaknesses. I'll give a couple more minutes for this one because this one's hard. <laughs> I 
And for people who are participating at home, you're more than welcome to put things into the chat. Hopefully I've got it sorted now so it'll all come through if you want to share your answers. Right. Throw out some of your perceived strengths and limitations. Just make sure you let me know which one's which. And go. Because we have shyness. limitation is shyness. Um, drinks would be um, from Gain the World with Lowell without music and structure. So that's okay. That's Knowledge about music structure. Cool. All right. Who else? Strength and a weakness. Strength writing lyrics. Writing lyrics. Good. And a weakness? A weakness. Um, or a limitation? Lack, lack of inspiration and a lack of musicality. Oh, lack of musicality. I don't know if I believe that, but okay. So lack of inspiration, mental blocks. I get that. Okay. Um, but we'll address lack of musicality later. All right. So uh, weakness for those listening at home was uh, lack of experience and a strength is being able to read music. All right, what else we got? Uh, intonation of the strength. Okay, intonation is a strength. Boring hook A weakness is what? Boring hook lines. Boring hooks. Yeah. Well, then it's not really a hook, so we'll talk about that. <laughs> All right, good. Um, my strengths are chorus and vocals. Okay. Um, strengths are choruses, weaknesses are verses. Okay, good. Okay, so what I'd like everyone to do is take note of the strengths in the like of the other person's strengths, right? Just hold that in your head for a second. We're gonna pay attention for the, to the limitations, all right? Let's see if we can turn our limitations into a strength, okay? So I'm gonna give an example of this. I I've just done a album for voice and piano, and I didn't really play piano when I started doing it. I knew music theory, because I'd studied music theory, and so I knew how to approach the piano from a theory background, but I didn't have that kind of fluidity on, uh, on piano. And so I ended up having to, I mean, I had to upskill a lot to get to what I wanted, but also, I ended up creating arrangements for my songs on piano that were accessible to me 
that were therefore accessible to other people. So other people who know me and know my music can play my music, even if they're not particularly strong piano players. And another great thing about it is, because um, I, I always, I, I know a lot of really amazing piano players and I often run my arrangements by them and they'll give me some great ideas and stuff, but they'll also compliment what I've come up with and they'll go, because I've been trained as a pianist, I've been trained to approach the piano a particular way and I would have never thought of that. All right, so a lot of your favorite all of your favorite artists are the way they are because of what they came into writing that song with. And over time, the artist that's writing a, a song, that's been writing songs for 30 years is not writing songs the same way as they did 30 years ago, right? And their songs 30 years ago could be bangers and their songs today, today can be bangers and they'll be for different reasons, right? Because they've grown and evolved and all those things. So my limitation was um, lack of piano playing experience, right? And so I did have to upskill quite a bit, but I also had to embrace that limitation in order to make it work. So I want you to pick one of your limitations and see if you can flip it into a strength. How are you guys doing at home? <coughs> Have you picked a limitation that you are flipping into a strength? Mm -hmm. Are you worried about your shyness one? Yeah, I'm just saying, how do you turn that into a strength? Bad getting against the wall. It's relatable. What's bad getting against the wall? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> the shyness is relatable. And that's a strength. You're writing about shyness. You're presenting yourself and saying, I have this shy. As long as you're authentic about it in your songwriting and in your presentation, it's a strength can be a strength. Hmm? So we were just talking about how shyness can be a strength, which is what one of our, our attendees said is their, their um, limitation. And so we talked about how shyness is relatable and how if you're writing, that could be a content for a song. It can be, as long as you're authentic about how you're doing it, you're writing the song, um, embracing that shyness, um, presenting a song, embracing that shyness, being authentic about it. Um, when you are putting yourself into the song or onto the stage, you want to be authentically yourself. You can be both working towards being less shy and embracing it at the same time. Or whatever it is your limitation is. Does anybody else have a limitation that they flipped into a strength? No, not yet. Yes? Um, my lack of experience means I'm more willing to experiment and try new things because I've got no set habits. Yes, brilliant. So lack of experience over here, which we we're seeing as a limitation, we now see as a strength because it means we're more willing to experiment and uh, to try new things. We don't have any habits developed. Um, it's an exciting part of, and, and actually the most formative, literally, part of becoming a songwriter is this time that you're in now, at the beginning, yeah? Cool. Does someone else have a, a limitation that they want help flipping into a, a strength? Lack of inspiration. That could be similar to shyness. That could be something that you literally write about. Mm -hmm. The thing that's vexing you, say you've got a mental block or something like that. So we talked a little bit about creating parameters or giving yourself prompts 
to to kind of create that inspiration. Um, another thing you can just do, you can do is just write about the thing that is vexing you. I can't think of what to write a song about, so I'm going to write a song about not being able to think of something to write a song about. <laughs> it will get you unstuck. All right, good. Um, all right, so we've kind of talked about this a little bit. What's my genre? No artist fits neatly into any one existing genre. New, and gen new genres are being created all the time. Leave the defining of your genre part of the process to the marketing on the back end. Yeah, just write the song. Do what feels right and accessible to you. It's going to end up being an amalgamation of genres. If you're listening to a lot of a particular genre, the song that you write might end up being heavily influenced by that. That's all good. Also, you might write a hundred songs before you write one that you are like, I really, really like this song. That's also fine as long as you go through the process of writing those songs. Yeah? So don't stop after one. Um, mindfulness. Um, this is this is kind of what I want to drill down to, I think, with the with this whole um, thing, is that um, so our list of things at the top: self consciousness, perfectionism, things feeling alien, mental blocks, right? Um, judgmental thoughts are common, but unhelpful. Yeah. When an unhelpful thought arises, just acknowledge it. It thinks it's there to help. It thinks it's there to protect you from doing something embarrassing. So you can thank it for that. But then you can just send it on its way because it's not helpful, right? Um, judgment is the enemy of creativity, right? You're trying to do something outside the box and it's that, it, that little voice that's like, stay in the box, we're afraid of getting outside the box. You're specifically trying to get outside of the box. So you're gonna have to ignore that voice. It's gonna come up and you're just gonna have to ignore it. Um, judgment is the enemy creativity. Observe the thought, let it go. Let the next thought arise. If that one is also unhelpful, let it go. Just do the same until a thought arises that you can do something with. All right? So a helpful thought, if you've just, if you're trying to objectively look at something that you've just done, right? Um, say you've written a chorus and you're not sh you're trying to you're just looking at it and trying to get some perspective on it and make make some judgment calls on whether you're done with it and whatnot um if those thoughts those judgmental thoughts are not going away at that time step away from it it's not the, it's not what you've done's fault it's just you just need a break right um Thoughts, and so when you root down to thoughts that are helpful, those thoughts that are helpful look like um, either relief from those judgmental feelings, right? Okay, this is just judgmental. It's not as bad as I'm, as I'm making it out to be. It can look like, okay, objectively, it's not what I was going for. And then you can decide, can you tweak it to get it going in the direction that you want it to go towards, or can you embrace where it's going, right? Um, either of those is a viable option, right? Um, so here, I'm just gonna fire off because we're actually getting to like to the to the end of our time. I'm just gonna fire off some things that I want us all to keep in mind when we're doing some songwriting. And I know most of this was about um, getting your mind right for being able to write songs. I'm also here to answer questions about the actual like mechanics of songwriting, choruses, verses, and stuff like that, if you want to talk about that after the live stream. Just really want to make sure that we get the the bits about um, not psyching ourselves out, <laughs> out of doing the thing. Um, okay, other, si other tips. Set aside time to do it. If you want to get better at it, it's the same as anything else. You have to practice dedicated time. There's a myth that songwriters, I mean, uh, you, you do get inspiration. I think most of us have had some sort of well of inspiration and then we've just sat down and wrote a song and that's amazing and it's the best feeling ever, right? But you can, and they're also, also often the best songs, but you can also, if you sit down and you have a regular practice, 
you can start to manifest that state. Hmm? It won't happen every time, but you get better at it. Right. Um, tip number two, write everything down or record it. Don't think you're going to remember it later. <laughs> Do not assume you're going to remember it later. Um, be curious. And this is also, in my experience, the antithesis of judgmental. Be curious. If you did something that you thought was out of character for you or that you didn't like, you know, or that you, you wouldn't have done, other, just be curious about why you did that. Don't throw it out. It could just be an angle you haven't considered yet. All right? Um, be yourself. But if that feels scary, be someone else. I know that sounds silly, but I have a few different bands, and in one of the bands that I write for, I am this like really bad like rocker chick, and I can do that on stage, and I can write those songs, but I don't feel like that person <laughs> in my regular life. It's like a, a, a manifestation of me. It's not inauthentic. It's just that I can get too in my head about it if I think about it too much, you know? So, um, if you have to compartmentalize, that's fine. These are parts of you, you know. Yeah. It, they are a facet are of yourself. Right? Yeah, it is still authentic. It is a facet of yourself. There's a part of me that is badass, and there's a part of me that's wearing this thing right now. So, <laughs> you know. Um, write with others. Right? So this is harkening back to earlier when I said, hey, remember what everyone else's strengths in here are? One of you was like, I'm really good at choruses. And another one was like, I'm really bad at hooks, but I'm good at other stuff. You guys get together. Right? Write with other people. Um, no two songwriters will have the same strengths. No two songwriters will have the same songwriting style or influences or things that they're bringing into it. So just like no one songwriter is the same, no combination of songwriters working together is the same, it will teach you a lot about yourself and your assumptions about what is good and isn't good music. And remember, we want to throw those out the window anyway. Um, it's really great to write with other people. That said, do not be precious. Do not be precious about your musical ideas. Right? Musical ideas can have many lives. If you created a musical idea and you bring that to a group, that's still your musical idea. And if it evolves within the course of that, with that group, that idea has changed. And that idea is that. But your original idea still stands. And you can still take it and do other things with it. All right? Do not be precious. Being precious is also going to stop you from f going down the rabbit hole, which is what we want to do. By not being precious, you mean don't just keep yourself. Don't just yeah. keep it to yourself. Don't gatekeep. Don't when you're in like a group with a when you're with other songwriters. Mm -hmm. Don't be like this is my idea and it has to be done exactly the way that I mm -hmm. envisioned it. What do you mean? Uh, gatekeep as in like um, uh, keeping others away from something that you have access to. Yeah. So um, you bring a musical idea to a group of other musicians, right? And they want to take it and run with it. Let them do that, right? And then also develop that idea the way that you're envisioning it in your head. Musical ideas can have several lives. This is perfectly okay. I've released the same song as different genres with different musicians and different things. It's not a one and done kind of thing. All right? Mm -hmm. that, that song that you listened to earlier, mm -hmm. that there's another version of a lady singing it. She sings it a lot faster than I sing it. Oh, yeah. And when I first heard her, I thought, oh, that sounds so much better than mine. But it's not my song. It's too fast. Yeah. But... I let it go anyway. Yeah. Because um, it's, it's fabulous the way she does it. Let people interpret it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's also like a really satisfying thing as a songwriter is when someone else takes your, your thing and interprets it and puts their, their spin on it. Oh, yeah. It's very cool as long as you're not being precious about it and like, there's one way for this to. Well, I mean, mm. you can be like that, but it's no fun. It's limiting yeah. in a bad way. <laughs> um, Good. No topic is too dumb. 
right? <laughs> um, it's not your personal symphony or bust. Right? Every song is not going to be your masterpiece. And you don't know which ones are going to be it, so just start throwing things at the wall. If you have an idea, don't talk yourself out of it before you start. Um, know when to step away. We've already talked about that. That's when those judgmental thoughts get like, and I was, I was started writing this song with this idea and it's gone in this direction. I don't like it. Just follow it where it goes. Or do both forks. Follow it where it went this way and then also try to write it the way that you envisioned. No reason you cannot do that. All right, and what a few people brought up, things to try when you get stuck. All right, here's some things you can try when you get stuck. Set a time limit. Give yourself a prompt. We talked about embracing limitations. You can also employ limitations, right? So like, say you don't play bass, but you have access to a bass guitar. I'm going to write a song on a bass guitar today. <laughs> you will write something that you wouldn't have written otherwise, which is just cool in itself. Yeah? Rhyming dictionaries are your friend. And stream of consciousness is cool for just seeing what's on your mind. You're not necessarily going to get a song out of it, but you might get a line out of it. You might get a theme. And don't forget that the whole point of this is self-regulation, emotional regulation, to get us in a mood, to get us out of a mood. To connect with ourselves and others. If you're doing that, that's what counts. And then if you get to the point that you're putting a song out there, just realize that not everybody is your audience. The only artists for whom everyone is their audience is the artists that have millions of dollars who can pay to literally put their song in everybody's face and then everyone is your audience. All right? But the people who enjoy your music, there's ways to, to connect with them. It is convoluted and changing all the time and I'm not going to get into any of that. But look, if you just put up a song on YouTube and nobody listens to it, it's only because there's 120,000 songs being put online every day. It's not you. <laughs> okay, I think that's all my tips and tidbits. Does anybody have any questions that they want to ask for the camera? I mean, no, I won't put your face on camera, but ask and then have that information that I share then be shared with the public. And then we can do questions after that are after camera, after camera questions. I'm just going to refresh this page and make sure nobody's, I'm not missing anything from anybody. Doesn't look like it. Cool. Well, say, could you explain Ruben Dictionary? Oh, rhyming dictionary. Uh, rhyming dictionary. It's just on, I actually have a physical one, but it's actually just on like Google rhyming dictionary so if you're looking for a word that rhymes with something or a synonym for something or any of that you can find that online yeah it's more precise than saying google is your friend but if you google it you'll also get what you're, what you're looking for cool does anybody have any other questions anything more structural that you want to ask verse chorus bridge that kind of stuff. It doesn't appear so, and that's possibly, you know, if our um, service is not the best, but I'm, I'm not getting anything. But if I missed anybody at home, if you wrote in a question and I just can't see it right now, I will come back to you. I'll send you a, a message.
anything else that you're like, if you were to go write a song right now, right after this, and you were like, D gonna employ this information, is there anything that you'd be like, oh, I could have used more on that? Or. Advice on coming up with a hook, or does it just take the advice on coming up with a hook? Um, it really depends on what you're writing for and things like that. But you, you came, you told me about a hook that you came up with. That's how it happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of out of the air. But you also like, um, again, if you're setting aside time every day to do writing, your brain is going to start to pick up those things. You know what I mean? Like that hook that you just picked up out of the air, you just said a thing and your friend was like, that's a great hook. And then you wrote a song on it. If you're writing songs on a regular basis, setting aside time for it, your brain is going to start looking for those things you'll have more of them. They exist there, you're just not noticing them yet. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, a hook is like the catchy part of the song, so halfway to the danger zone. That's the hook. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm a hook. You're a hook person? I yeah. Very good. I've <laughs> learned a lot about yourself. I good. I'm so glad. Cool. I never know there were different narratives, stories, and then I didn't know any of that. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Really cool. Very cool. Yeah. And there's a lot in the structural things with music, but that's a whole yeah. other workshop. And also, that is, um, that can be limiting, and it can also be freeing. It kind of all of these things depend on how you use it. So, give yourself whatever it is that you need. So, assess yourself: Do I need structure right now, or do I need to be freeing myself to to trying some stuff? I think you don't know what you don't know. Sorry. That's true. Yeah, you yeah, don't you know, know what you don't know. Oh, oh, I'm glad. Oh, okay. It could be quite simple. Stop making it so hard. Yeah. It can. It's a lot of the best songs are the simple ones. Here, I'll do one for you, um, since you said simple. Um, this is an original, and this is something that I wrote for when a, a friend passed away. And um, you know how you just don't have much that you can say when those kinds of things happen? because it was sad, but also just like uh, the peace that you want to be there, you know? 
And that's one of the reasons, the things that makes music so powerful is it doesn't need to be complicated. It can be complicated and it can be cool in that way. And feel free to follow the rabbit hole if that's where it takes you. Um, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be anything except right for you. So, yeah. All right, I think we're going to end it there. Yeah? Everyone feeling good? Deep breaths. All right, thank you so much. See you guys later. Oh, no, it's in the front. I didn't have to do that.